great. Uh, getting some good comments on my channel. I'm an idiot. I uh, don't know anything. Do I have a brain? I uh, love those comments. Uh, it's pretty funny. Whatever. Uh, so, unfortunately, this is going to just kind of be a video about the Ukraine war and everything that I learned today. I, I spent most of the day at the uh, physical therapy and uh, getting in about a five-mile hike because uh, I got to do that to try to bring my body back from breaking my neck. So, uh, but anyway, these are, uh, this is a lot from Douglas McGregor and I encourage you to just watch his video. You don't need to watch mine, but I'll try to just summarize it because, you know, I, that's, that's the thing. These videos get kind of long winded, but, uh, what, what, uh, McGregor says is that the brigades that are left in Bakhmut have lost about 70% of the strength. And that means that, uh, they're not even a fighting force to, uh, uh, the, this, this, this is a mop-up operation, so within the next couple, couple two, three weeks, maybe a month, uh, I, don't, I don't see how Bakhmut's going to hold up. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the, he said there was up to 14, uh, it, originally there was up to 14 brigades in there of 4,000 men, and they've all been withdrawn. Um, so that's, uh, that's why, that's, that's where that is. Uh, and then, of course, well, when you say, you know, 70%, you're looking at 2,800 killed or wounded in those uh, remaining brigades. Uh, so um, the, uh, let's see, 100,000 inside Donbass itself. So, all right, so we got General Slovenkia. He's the guy in charge from Russia. Uh, we're looking at uh, what he has as, as his, at his disposal. Uh, let's just get into these numbers. Uh, according to McGregor now, and like I said, watch his video. He's got uh, 100,000 combat troops in Belarus, Belarus that's um, Belarus. Another 100,000 just each of Kharkiv uh, in eastern Ukraine and 80 to 90,000 in southern Ukraine. So what uh, McGregor is suggesting is that uh, maybe there will be a three, when the Normandy invasion happens, it could be a three-pronged attack from Russia from these three fighting forces. Uh, now his estimates, uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I hope these, these, these aren't real. He says that uh, Ukraine only has about 150,000 combat effective combat troops now they've got many more than that uh but he's saying you know of their of their original uh you know assault forces that that's about their their effective um ability uh these are some pretty impressive numbers um i i had no idea i like i told you their manufacturing is just ramped up beyond belief um and uh, and in fact they're trying to expand capacity in, in russia so they've got two thousand t-90 tanks uh, ready to storm across uh, uh into um uh, more western ukraine uh, the, and these are the best and newest tanks that russia has uh three to four thousand um infantry fighting vehicles several thousand rocket artillery and that's all ready to go uh so the ground is frozen and so that's what they've been waiting on. And uh, he said they might want to give it another couple of weeks uh, to make sure, because I guess, you know, it's just like uh, if you're going to go out on a lake and hike across the ice, right? You want that ice frozen at least about a foot deep, because these are heavy vehicles that they're going to be moving through on a, on a blitzkrieg uh, once they've mopped up um, uh, the uh, Bel I mean, Bel Bakhmut and everything around there. Uh, now, the, the numbers on the Ukrainian side uh, with this battle, he says there's 100,000, 150,000 dead. Um, I'm seeing reports that there are a substantial number of Ukrainian troops that are trying to reinforce uh, Bakhmut, but everybody says that's a uh, meat grinder. I hate that name, uh, but uh, who knows? I mean, but but there's, there's evidently there's still a lot of Ukrainian troops in the area, so that fight's far from more over. Uh, the, Reports are, and this is what this uh, video will be titled, is Marin, Marin, Marinka uh, has fallen. Um, there's two apartment buildings, uh, evidently. Uh, if you ever watched the movie with Tom Cruise, uh, uh, War of the Worlds, if you recall, they were in these huge apartment buildings. Well, that's kind of where the Ukrainians are holding out, um, and they're supposed to be very well built. And uh, so, you know, you can't just bring a tank in and blow them up. So it's going to take the Russians a while, or probably maybe a week or two, to clear those apartment buildings. But for the most part, the rest of the city has fallen. So I'm going to say Marinka Falls. That would be the title of this video. Uh, Kal Kalishkhivka, K-L-I-S-H-C-H-I-I-V-K-A. Uh, those attacks continue. That's uh, more the encirclement of Bakhmut. Uh, that's uh, continuing in the south. Uh, from what I'm seeing, the Ukrainians are about... I mean, not the Ukrainians, the Russians are about uh, at the midpoint 
of that uh, that city. So uh, it, it's, it certainly hasn't fallen yet, but uh, it looks like the uh, Russians are continuing to advance there. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, so Kashahora, north, and uh, Padra Strinkia, uh, uh, those are both being attacked. Uh, the fight continues there. That's uh, north of uh, Bakhmut, so the encirclement. They're still working on it. Um, and then you've got the... Uh, uh, down in the south, uh, on a different front, you got Crimean forces that are building up, building up. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh yeah, Andrew, and Andre Yushlov. Uh, he's the uh, well. If you if you watch uh, Bidenopolis, um, his uh, PR. Uh, what's the uh, the gay woman, the gay lesbian woman that uh, the black woman that uh, does all his speaking for him? Uh, well, this is the equivalent in uh, Ukraine. Uh, he's been fired, uh, he, and he did a good job. And uh, they're they're saying maybe it was his remarks about the fact that uh, that the Ukrainian forces tried to shoot down a KH-22 missile and knocked it off target and hit the apartment building. But now the speculation is that that's impossible. That the, if, if if it was a KH-22, it would have just completely demolished the building. So they're saying it was probably not a KH-22 that. Now the speculation is is that it was a Ukrainian uh, anti-defense missile that hit the apartment building, and that's why they fired this guy. Uh, well, fired? Yeah, actually, yeah, he was relieved. He didn't he didn't resign. So that's very interesting. That means a shakeup in the Ukrainian. Uh, uh, well, it's just like when um, what was the uh, red-haired woman? I can't remember her name for Biden uh, that was replaced by by the other one. Anyway. Um, uh, so, oh, so estimates are according to, I, well, I, I think it was Andrew and Alexander. Uh, he said there's about 170,000 Ukrainian combat troops that are are the the peak troops that are left. So when you look at 400,000 uh, Russians coming up against them, I don't see uh, where they have much of a chance. You know, my question to you was, I wonder where does McGregor get these numbers? Where does McGregor get these numbers? Um, so. Uh, like I said, the spin doctor. The other one uh, I found very interesting, and this was uh, outside of uh, all of all all the videos that I watched, was Bloomberg admits that Russian oil export is at its highest level ever, and that sanctions have failed. Well, I, I did a video two days ago that I told you about how the sanctions were failing. Uh, so I guess Bloomberg now admits that. So that was very interesting. Uh, just two of uh, the last things. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've seen the video, but uh, they they revealed a bronze Martin Luther King statue <laughs> in Boston. <laughs> oh my God, these woke freaking artists! Holy moly! Th I hope I thank God that statue was not in Florida. Oh my goodness gracious! I I I I, I looked at it and I went. That's the ugliest statue I've ever seen. It looked like two butts coming together, but it's supposed to be uh, two arms hugging each other. And uh, I, you just got to look at the video or the picture. It's probably on Twitter right now. I mean, I, I, I was like, holy moly! I, I, I whew, that was something else. I, uh, the, the, um, let's see, uh, what was? Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Um, trying to. Oh yeah, this the, the two. Two things, you know, sometimes I just like to talk about stupid shit that I see. Every other commercial on uh, YouTube right now is about the Medicare Advantage program where you can get $900 in food. And then, of course, when I listen to the radio, because I do, I, that's all what I do when I hike. I just kind of listen to the news. It, I don't know. I, I, I like music, too. I do listen to some rock and roll when I hike. But, I mean, most of the time I'm just kind of tuning into the news. But every damn commercial is a covid commercial so what I'm what I'm bitching about here is that these are your tax pay dollars that are paying for these stupid commercials every COVID commercial that comes on the radio is paid for by the US government and it's in support of the fight the pharmaceutical industry why doesn't uh, the pharmaceutical industry pay pay for their own damn commercials no it's yours and my taxpayer money that's paying for these stupid you know let's get your booster to your booster to your booster put cellophane over your head and wear a freaking diaper suit everywhere you go that's what the, the, these advertisements are all about and then this medicare advantage thing yeah i'm enrolled in the medicare advantage but it was more about my dental coverage i'm 
yeah, I, okay, if you can get $900 in food, but I mean, you don't need to advertise. I mean, that's a hell of a lot. So what I'm, what I'm seeing here is this machine. It's a machine that washes money. So the federal government, the Biden administration, gives the money to the, the to tech companies because YouTube's Google, right? And they, they feed the machine. They're feeding Google and, and by buying all of these advertisements and and, and, and so in support of the public good. Yeah, well, it does not the public good. It's in the Google good. That's where all your money's going. It's not going to you. It's not going to me. It's going to Google. It's going to the tech giants. And what do you think that money buys? It buys influence. It buys censorship. It buys uh, everything that is against the United... I mean, I don't even think the government should be allowed to buy advertisements on these platforms. That's just my opinion. But you you give me, give me your thoughts below. What do you think? I mean, I... I I, I just wanted to go off on a tangent. I just thought, man, holy shit. Every time I turn around, it's one of those. Uh, the last thing I found interesting was I was watching, um, and you might want to watch him. Uh, this is John Williams. He's got shadow stats. He, he basically disputes the government statistics on what inflation numbers are and all of that. And uh, he's always got some interesting uh, videos. And uh, I did not know this. I mean, I live in Florida. And so I, when, I, when I saw him doing a video about Florida, I guess he lives here now, uh, you know, just like anybody that, that's somewhat uh, smart. Um, he said that Florida is going to mandate flood insurance for everyone. Uh, and I guess, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's the, what, what you have to do, you know, because if you, if you live on the coast, you know, because Ian just came through and just wiped everything out, well, the insurance becomes too expensive for all those people to live down there. So you want to spread that money out all over the state. So basically you're punishing people that move to places that we're not going to drown and, uh, and you're benefiting the people that, that are in places and, and if this is true, I, I, I hope not, but it, it sounds like it's been passed uh, by the uh, Republican legislature. I'm against that. I don't think that you that I should have to pay for some idiot to live on the coast of Florida next to the ocean, you know, because you, you know hurricanes are going to come through. Every year we get hurricanes in Florida, but and that's why I'm putting in new windows. I got new windows coming in. I'm, I'm putting in uh, stormproof windows to my house at a huge cost, at a huge cost. And so anyway... Um, that's just my opinion on that. So anyway, we talked about the Martin Luther King, and then we talked about uh, the flood insurance uh, man mandate to um, Florida. So I guess that's it for this video. Holy moly. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. No. Okay. All right. So it's good, 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 good to live in the free, 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 free state, free Republican state of Florida. Thank God I don't live in a Democrat state. Oh, that was another thing. I, the, I tell you, the shit pops in my mind was, uh, you know, there was a guy on, he was doing commentary. And, uh, you know, back when this thing began last February, you got to remember, it was the Biden. I mean, remember, everybody said, oh, Trump's going to be a warmonger. He's going to start wars. He's going to he's going to have us all around the world fighting. Well, you know, when Russia first they approached the Biden administration and they said, uh, look, you know, we want to uh, we want to renegotiate this this treaty, we, you know, because you're bombing the Donbass region or your, your Ukrainian forces are. And uh, and Biden just told them the double barrel, right, the double barrel. And uh, and so Russia just felt like they didn't have a decision. And then all the Democrats, the, the warmongering Democrats, I mean, you think that, you know, if you're a Democrat, you are a warmonger. You do understand that, right? There are some of the Republicans lined up with the Democrats, and there's some neocons in there. But for the most part, I'd say uh, the majority of the Republicans in Congress are not warmongers. But every single Democrat was on board. Let's go fight Russia. Yeah. Anyway, I just uh, I'm totally against it. And, that, and that's how this war came about. NATO and uh, the Biden administration uh, and the Democrats just all teamed up and said, Oh, hell no, no, Russia, we are not even going to talk to you. You want to go to war? We're going to bury you with the sanctions. Well, I've talked about how good the sanctions are doing. You know, you, you, do, you believe what you want. Go watch MSDNC or ABC or CBS or uh, all of those channels. I'm just trying to paint you the real picture. It's going to get dark here in the United States. Peace out and stay free.